Sorel RMD. So what do you do with indeterminate nodules? You have a lung nodule, it's eight millimeters or greater in size, and you have a probability of cancer of at least five to 10%. The question is, what do we do now? How can I prove that this nodule is cancer or not? There are basically three options prior to doing surgery that can further characterize a lung nodule. These three are serial CT scans using low dose technique, PET CT, which is a form of metabolic imaging, and CT guided biopsy. What do these three options all have in common? All three options are governed by radiologists. The first option is serial CT. The goal here is to follow the nodule over time and anything you follow over time will reveal itself to you. If a nodule is truly lung cancer, it should grow, and a typical volume doubling time is 400 days. We use a cutoff of two years stability. That means that if a solid nodule is stable in size for two years, it is considered benign and no further follow-up is needed. Now, what if I don't have two years to figure out if a nodule is cancer? I wanna know right now, is this lung nodule cancer? The best option in this case is PET-CT. PET stands for Positron Emission Tomography. PET uses a special radioactive substance called fluorodeoxyglucose, abbreviated FDG, to look for increased glucose metabolism in your body. We all know we need glucose to survive. Cancers need glucose to survive. Cancers need a lot of energy, they're using a lot of glucose, in PET-CT, we exploit this ability of a tumor to need glucose by using FDG to tag that glucose. Simply put, if a nodule is taking up a lot of FDG, we can be reasonably sure that it is a lung cancer. Now, PET-CT is not perfect. There are instances where a nodule will take up a lot of glucose and it's actually not cancer. And the opposite is also true. There are, op there are times when a nodule does not take up glucose or does not take up FDG and it's still cancer. So these tests are not perfect. I wish they were, but overall PET-CT is a very effective, non-invasive way to further characterize a lung nodule. Lastly, we have CT-guided biopsy. This is a procedure where we take a thin needle and use it to access the nodule going through the chest, usually going between the ribs. We then take another needle and put it through that first needle and do what's called a fine needle aspiration. We suck out cells from the nodule and we send it to the lab. In a few days, we have a diagnosis of whether the nodule has benign or malignant tissue within it. CT-guided biopsy is also not a perfect option. The overall accuracy is in the 70 to 90% range. And there are also complications that can happen from any type of interventional procedure. There is a very small risk of sudden death from an air embolism, which is about 0.07%. And there's a fairly moderate risk of a pneumothorax or air within the chest. A pneumothorax can occur 10 to 20 percent of the time and it should be noted that a pneumothorax is very easily treated by an interventional radiologist. So there you go, those are the options for evaluation of an indeterminate nodule. Next we'll be talking a little bit more about CT-guided lung biopsy. You're watching Sorelga RMD.